welcome to the Castle Handmade Crochet Podcast. My name is Liz and I'm coming to you from the Southern Highlands of New South Wales in Australia. So welcome. Um, if you have watched before, thanks for joining in again. Uh, if you are new, welcome and I hope you enjoy. Uh, now I make this uh, video podcast once every two weeks and it's really just uh, me chatting about projects I'm working on. Uh, I also talk a little bit about classes that I'm running and also about designs that I am working on. Um, so as you can see, it's everything crochet from um, works in projects and finished objects to new patterns and designs that I have coming up or classes that I'm teaching. It's everything to do with crochet. Um, yeah, so welcome. I hope that you're doing well wherever you are in this world. Uh, down here in the Southern Highlands of New South Wales at the moment, it is very wet and rainy. There's a little break in the rain, so I'm hoping that the sound's okay and it doesn't get too heavy and noisy whilst I'm recording. Um, I live here with my two boys and my husband and the studio that I'm sitting in is actually a room um, of our, our house. So this is where I work and um, I also live. So I'm very lucky to be able to work from home um, and I really love it. So again, welcome, um, grab yourself a drink, whether it's a, a cold drink or a warm drink, depending on whereabouts you are. Here, it's a warm cup of tea today, um, <laughs> especially with the cold uh, rain that we've got happening. So um, yeah, grab your drink, grab a crochet project and join me. I um, actually don't have any finished projects to show you today. Uh, I decided to pull out everything I've been working on and I thought we'd go through all of the whips. So the works in progress, because that seems to be all I have at the moment. Um, I did finish a couple of things this week. However, they're um, patterns that are destined for magazine publications. So can't share them with you until they are published. And um, for these ones that I did this week, uh, they won't be available until October. Uh, so I'll show you those uh, when they are out. Um, but for now, I'll just show you what I'm working on. So the one, the current project that is in my hand, you would have seen before. Oh, if you've watched podcasts before, because I have shared this one before. Hopefully you can see it okay there. So this is an ongoing project. It's just a very simple um, ripple blanket. This is a, it's the pattern by Attic24, so Lucy from the Attic24 blog. Really simple to do, an easy project that I can just pick up and work on without really thinking about. Um, the yarn I'm using is, it's probably about a 10 plier or worsted weight. Um, it, it's an acrylic yarn. I think I mentioned before, I don't really like working with it. Um, I don't like the feel of it too much. It's, it's going to be a nice blanket. It, it will wash up well and I'll use some nice fabric softener to make it feel much better. But my preference is to work with natural fibres. Um, however, I was given this yarn and rather than waste it, uh, I just wanted to use up what I already have. And so, um, yeah, this is uh, going to be a, a blanket that's going to be gifted back to the people that um, purchased the yarn for me. Um, so this one's been an ongoing one and well, we can see lots of ends there, but um, it's been a great one just to pick up when my mind <laughs> cannot concentrate on a pattern and I can just pick it up and do um, work on it. And now that the weather is getting a lot cooler, um, it's actually quite nice to have on my legs and I'm quite enjoying sitting here <laughs> with it on my legs um, while I talk to you. So that's one of my works in progress. Um, and I guess it's probably good if you, if you saw it um, a few weeks ago, I'd only done a few rows. So I've made um, a lot more progress on it. I took it on a car trip with me and so quite a few rows got done. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm just going to, I'm not sure how big it's going to be. I'm just going to keep working until the yarn runs out. Um, and then that will be its finished size. Haven't thought about a border or anything. And I actually, I actually quite like it without a border. So that might be what I end up doing. We'll wait and see. 
Um, so that's project number one that I've been working on. Um, I'm going to show you another blanket that I started a long time ago. Um, and I only recently pulled it back out the cupboard because I decided it was probably a good time to finish it. Now, this one, I already started joining because I was just playing with um, colour combinations and things. But basically, this is just going to be a simple, uh, solid granny square rug or blanket. So it's, um, I'm just making solid granny squares like this. I'm doing three rows of a colour and then the final border row is just in the cream and then that's what I'm joining. So what I have done is um, this yarn is the eight ply um, estate which is an Australian wool machine washable. I love using it for blankets. Um, I stock about 50 colours of this yarn, of this wool. And so I wanted to make a blanket that included um, most of them, if not all of them. And I wanted to put it together as a bit of a rainbow blanket that had like a, a gradual colour gradation through it. Um, so as you can see, I've started joining some of the blues and greens. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. But that's some of the blues and greens that I've been putting together. So I think my next step is because I've, I've actually, I've made all of the squares, um, made all of them. And so what I think I'm going to do now is I need to sit it down on a, either a big table or on the floor and lay out exactly where all my squares are going to go. Um, I hadn't decided on the size uh, until recently <laughs> because the cream that I'm using for the border has actually been discontinued. So that means I won't be making any more squares and I have just enough to finish joining it all and pop, probably just doing a row um, in the cream of the border. So that's decided my size for me. So now what I just have to do is lay all the squares out, decide where they need to go, um, and then I'll be able to join them. So um, the way in which I'm joining these squares is with a flat slip stitch join. Let me see if I can hold up a square that's going to show that. So hopefully you can see that. Okay. So it's a bit of a slower join because as you, you what you're doing is with your two squares, you're just picking up one loop, um, the back loop from each of the, the squares and you're doing a slip stitch into those back loops. So it's a bit slower than other joins are but it produces a really nice look because it's nice and flat and um, I just really like the look of it. So what I'm doing is I'm joining all the rows like vertically first and then I'll come back once they're all joined together and I will join the um, like the horizontal joins. I'll make those um, all after the afterwards. So um, it will come together once I make my decision about where the, I think the, the position of the colours and the colour placement of the squares is going to take me probably longer than joining them. <laughs> um, I think I spend a bit too much um, planning out where squares are meant to go than actually working on them. So um, I'm hoping I'll get this finished. It's just going to be a fairly small rug. I think it'll be like a toddler size or stroller size blanket. So I'm going to work on that um, and try and get that one finished because I'm actually sick of seeing it in the cupboard and I want a finished blanket to um, be using or, or to maybe even gift. I'm not sure what I'm doing with this one. It'll just be a nice little showcase of all the colours that I stock in this range because it is it really is my favourite yarn to work with, especially for blankets. Um, yeah, so that's this blanket, is, which is the solid granny squares. So that's um, work in progress number two. So as you can see, I've got two blankets on the go. That's probably enough blankets, I'd say. Um, but I'm still sticking to my year goal or the main thing that I was focusing on this year, and that was not to make any more scarves or neck <laughs> accessories. Um, I'm trying to focus on other projects. So, so far I've made some toys um, and some socks and a couple of other things. So that's what I'm um, 
trying to focus on this year. Um, chances are I will make another scarf. Um, oh, in fact, I've got a, a cowl pattern that will be coming out very soon. Oh, and, and another scarf pattern. <laughs> but I've already worked on those. I, I created those designs last year, so um, I can get away with that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got the two projects, blanket projects, currently on the go. And then I've just started a third blanket project. Um, now this one, this one's a long, I've got a long time frame to work on this. Well, fairly long anyway. Um, my son is turning 10 this year. And um, the very first blanket that I made was a crochet granny square rug for him when he was born. Um, and that was my absolute first crochet blanket. In fact, it was my first crochet project ever. And he has treasured that blanket for almost 10 full years now. And um, I told him that for his 10th birthday, I'd make him another blanket. Um, he could help choose the colours and um, we talked about different designs and had a look at pictures and things. Originally, he said he just wanted another granny square blanket, um, just a basic granny square, just in different colours. Uh, and I kind of persuaded him to go with something a bit different, I think for my own <laughs> personal enjoyment of making as well. My crochet skills have come on a little bit um, over those 10 years. So um, making him another blanket that is not a granny square would be nice. And then after talking to him and looking at pictures, we decided, he decided on blues and greys for the colours. But the pattern design... Um, I noticed he sort of grav gravitated towards more geometric patterns. And so um, we were looking at mosaic patterns. I was showing him some mosaic blankets that were worked in long rows. And so they were like, um, the design was worked in like, yeah, so in rows quite long. Uh, but he preferred the look of squares for the blanket. So I bought a pattern. The pattern I bought is called the Saga Square or Saga Mosaic Square. I cannot remember the name of the designer, but um, just like everything else, everything that I talk about today, I'll pop links in um, the section below. So you just need to click on that and then I should have clickable links for patterns or if I talk about any um, yarns or supplies and things, links will be down there. So I'll also put the designer's name <laughs> down there as well. But this is... The Saga Square. So I'm really happy with how this worked out. Um, I really, I'm really enjoying mosaic crochet. I've done a little bit in the past, but nothing, nothing much. I just think I had a little practice. Um, I don't know why I keep turning that around. It's the same every way. <laughs> um, I've worked with mosaic crochet before, but I didn't actually make anything out of it. It was just a little sample to see how I liked it. Um, and so now actually launching into a full project is really exciting. Um, once I, I get a good understanding of it um, and I'm happy with how I'm executing it, uh, chances are I'll want, run some workshops here in my studio um, to teach everybody else how to um, work the mosaic squares. So, so far I have done three squares. Oh, I could have, maybe I've finished four, but I've blocked, I've blocked three just for the podcast so I could show you them. Um, looking nice and straight and flat. <laughs> so they are the Saga squares. As you can see, at the moment I've picked the light, there's a light grey, which is um, in the estate range is called Robot. So I'm working with the Robot, which is the light grey, as the main colour in all the squares. And then I'm just changing um, the other colour. So this one here, this um, it's almost a royal blue colour. This is called Midship Blue. We have this one here, which is Sky Blue. And then this one, I've got a feeling this one is Aegean Blue. Yeah, I think it is Aegean. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure, not sure just yet how many colors we're gonna go with. There were some grays other greys, like darker greys that Cameron liked. So I think I'll make one of every square, like which, with every colour that he chose. And then we might play with placement um, 
and I might even see if my husband <laughs> might do a little Photoshop thing for me and we'll play with um, moving the, the colors around and putting them in different orders. I'd like to do some kind of fade where um, the main color fades from like a dark blue through to a lighter blue and then through into grays. Um, but we'll see. I'm not sure yet what's going to happen. But Cameron's really excited to see the squares working up now. So I think we're pretty set on the square. This design also comes with a border design. Um, and Cameron saw the picture of it in the pattern and he really liked that too. So I'd say this is the one we're sticking with and it's likely that we'll do the border that matches it. Um, but we'll just wait and see once it's all worked up. I think I'm going to work this to about the side of, size of a single bed, single bed blanket. Um, which at the moment I have not, I don't even know how, how big these squares are in centimetres, so I don't know how many squares I'm going to need yet. Um, but that's, yeah, another work in progress and um, quite a fun one. So this is a, a good little portable project for me to take, whereas the, the ripple blanket's getting quite large and joining of those rainbow um, solid squares is not going to be a portable project but this one definitely is so I'll be able to put that in a project bag and, and take it wherever I need so what's that now work in progress number three <laughs> let's see how many more I've got here there's a few I think I need a cup of tea or a drink of tea sorry okay next work in progress again not a scarf or a neck accessory. This one is the start of a beanie. Now, if you recognize these colors, um, it would be because I used these two colors to make um, the little baby cable socks that um, I showed in a previous episode. Um, so I am making now a baby's cable beanie I'm using the same designer as um, as the little socks that I made. So it's uh, a design by Lakeside Loops. This is a different cable pattern though. So this one is called, let's see, this one's called the Finley Cable Crochet Hat. But at the moment, you can't really see much of the cable because I'm only about three rows into the cable here. The way this beanie has worked, um, as you can see by what I'm holding, is that it's worked from the rib um, and then it's worked up into the, the peak of the, the crown. So you actually start at the widest and then we're going to be decreasing and um, coming up to the, the top of the beanie there. So I've got, um, I've lost my train of thought now. Okay, um, the rib. So the rib is actually worked in short rows. They're worked uh, short rows across this way. And then when you finish working those, you join them and then you pick up all the stitches on the side of the, um, you pick up all the stitches that are around the side of the rib and that becomes the stitches that you need to start going around for um, the top of the beanie. Oh, and I've got, you'll see my cute little progress keeper there. These are another little item that I hand make um, and I sell in my store. So this one's a little teacup and I have all sorts of little um, cute little charms on those, but that's one of my favorites, the little teacup. So I pop them, a lot of people ask me, what, what do you use them for? They can be used as stitch markers I prefer to use the little plastic looking safety pins as my stitch markers. And I use these as a little progress keeper to stop my work unraveling when it's in my bag. Uh, so when that loop is on your hook and you're finished and you need to put the work down, you then just pop the clasp into that loop. So that holds the loop and then if you pull on the strand of yarn, so the tail you're working with, um, it's not going to undo. So that's um, just a little, it works as a little stopper. I've got other customers that just pop them on their work because they're cute and <laughs> um, they look really nice. So um, yeah, that's what they're for and how I use them. 
So I, I got right into that project. I think I started it about two weeks ago. Um, and I was really excited about starting the cables and then I put it down and haven't picked it up since. Um, I think I went to pick it up, but my mind wasn't ready to work with cables and I really just needed to go back to the ripple blanket. Um, so I haven't touched that one for a little while, but I think once I get going on it, it's gonna work up fairly quickly. A bit like the socks, the cabled socks that I made. Um, once I got going on that pattern, they worked up really fast. So yeah, that's um, a nice little way to complete that set. So a set of socks and a set um, and a little beanie. So that's my next work in progress. Um, now let's see what else I've got. <laughs> I told you there was going to be a lot of work in progress this time. Um, all little, like all projects that will eventually get finished. Some of them, you'll, oh, you'll see some finish quickly and others are just going to keep going on, I have a feeling. Um, now, here is my next project. <laughs> it certainly doesn't look like much at all there. Um, this is a fingerless mitten. It's the most simple design for a fingerless mitten that you can come up with. <laughs> simple design in, in that, I mean, like the construction of it is really simple. What makes it a bit interesting is the stitch that I've used for it and also that I've used a chunky yarn. So um, now this was really quick for me to make up. However, I only have one finished because I'm going to make the second one. So I've got my ball of yarn ready. This is a 14 ply yarn that I'm using. I haven't made up the second one yet because I'm actually going to write the pattern and create a video um, for this pattern as well. And I'm gonna pop it up on my YouTube channel for free um, like I said, it's a really quick and easy pattern, but what's interesting is the design or the stitch, the way in which I've used the stitches here. And a lot of people keep telling me it looks like it's knitted, which is, um, yeah, which is kind of, I guess it's kind of why I like this stitch because it's not a typical looking crochet stitch and it has the really interesting um, like lines that you get through here and a really, it's a really simple method of doing it. Um, so basically this is just worked in rows back and forth um, and then you sew up the edge of the first row and the edge of your last row and you just leave a little gap for your thumb to poke through uh, and then I just do a single crochet, a US term single crochet around the edges and that just neatens it up. But yeah, like I said, a very quick and simple and easy and very warm as well. So um, yeah, I'm hoping to get that video done and the pattern written um, early next week and then it will go up on um, YouTube here and I'll, I'll probably pop it up on Ravelry as well as a free download uh, for those that prefer written patterns as well. And that's um, my next work in progress. <laughs> And that's it. That's all that I have out at the moment. Um, I worked on a few swatches for some other designs. And like I said, I just finished um, another design, but can't show you those. I've been, um, what else has been going on here? I've been running toy workshops the last two weeks. So I had an intermediate toy workshop and I also had a beginner's toy workshop. Uh, so that was lots of fun. Um, everyone's always excited when they're working on a toy. Um, it's always just so much fun to see them come to life, especially, um, you know, you're working on this this little item and then you pop some eyes in and all of a sudden it becomes a real, a real um, thing and it has its own little personality. <laughs> so that's been a lot of fun. I, um, I've been busy um, just removing, um, shuffling things around in the studio and making way for some new winter yarns, um, clearing out some of the more summery yarns. I'm holding uh, an open studio this weekend. So I'm open Friday, Saturday and Sunday, uh, a bit like a shop. Um, people can come in, chat to me about classes and workshops, um, browse all of the beautiful things that are around, get some inspiration from the projects that I have. Um, so I'm having a bit of a sale and um, doing a bit of prep work for that. Uh, we are almost at the end of our school term here. So 
uh, my two boys, uh, which I need to pick up from school very soon, um, very, very soon. <laughs> um, we have um, school holidays coming up and it's also Easter holidays. So um, I'm taking a little bit of time off classes um, in April and uh, chances are I'll be doing a lot of crochet and I'll probably still be working on um, patterns and some designs. Uh, and yeah, but we're just going to have a little bit of a break as well and hoping to get um, away for a couple of days as well. So I hope, um, I hope you've enjoyed listening today. Um, like I said, there was going to be lots of works in progress and there certainly was. Um, but thank you for all your comments that you've been um, putting down uh, and chatting to me about. And um, for those of you that have um, followed me on Ravelry and Instagram and things, it's really great. So it's, it's really nice to be making um, contact with everyone and seeing what you're working on. Uh, it's been great as well. So um, make sure you comment below with, uh, you know, what you've liked seeing, what you're keen on seeing more of. Uh, and tell me what you're working on. Uh, I love hearing about what you're working on or um, if you have some, you know, ideas of some future projects that you want to work on. Normally I would tell you what other future projects I'm going to work on, but for now I'm just focusing on finishing some things. So I won't, I'll try not to look too far ahead um, at other items. So yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for listening and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.